guys, it's Ann over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on blue. And I think I'm going to try and harvest, I'm going to screen just a little bit of this on this end before we get started. So let me set up the camera and grab the uh, screen. Okay. So this isn't generally how the wedge system works, but I am in need of some castings for my bonsais. So I have used the rest of what I had left in the uh, when I planted my fall garden outside with my turnips and my beets and my garlic. So I'm going to need a little bit more for my bonsai. Right now I'm just going to put the overs in a bucket and uh, I'll put those in when I feed uh, blue today. We'll just recycle this stuff. You know, sometimes I don't even really know how long it takes for this to uh, completely break down. You've got the avocado and the seeds from whatever and pumpkin seeds. and But it doesn't really matter. It just keeps going through and until, until it does get broke down. And I'm just using the quarter inch screen here. It doesn't have to be super fine. It's just going to go in with some soil. I think mostly with the wedge, you know, you just leave this alone until it's all done and do it all at once. But I'm not one for following the rules so much. This is also a good opportunity to take off any stickers or windows from envelopes that the worms have pushed to the top. It's good to get them before I put them in with the plants. And you see. Some people ask, you know, how big are the cocoons of the red wigglers and the blue worms? So, if you remember from one of my past videos, here's my fingernail against uh, the cocoon of possibly a blue worm or a red wiggler. And I'll put him back in there. But just looking, you know, through here, do I, I don't see a whole lot of them. And as soon as I say that, I'm going to see a whole bunch. <laughs> But I have worms living in probably all of my plants. So um, whatever I don't pick out will end up living in a bonsai tree upstairs. And that's fine. They keep the roots clean on the uh, bonsai trees and the house plants and stuff like that. That's the way I look at it. The worms eat things that are dead. And so if they have something to eat, in, you know, a potted plant, then it probably was something that was breaking down that would not be good to expose the plant to. So it's for the best that the worms have something to eat. Alright. So I think that'll be enough for what I'm trying to do right now. And you can see this is what we get for castings through the quarter inch screen. Um, if you like the idea of these screens, you can purchase them from my Amazon affiliate link down in the bottom. Uh, you can buy them as a set, like I did, or you can buy them individually. I use the quarter inch one and the twelfth inch one the most, but sometimes when I'm just trying to do a rough harvest, I will use the half inch. And the 20th of an inch is the one that I use when I do the water harvest. If you haven't seen that video, I'll, I'll link that over there. But sometimes the castings just get so sticky that I don't have the patience to uh, wait for them to dry out. And I will just run everything through the water. But, you know, I'm just kind of doing a once over here, put the cocoons back in if I see them. 
but since there hasn't been a feeding on that end of the bin, there probably is not a lot of worms down there. So just looking. All right, so that's that's good. I'll move this off to the side. Okay, so I'm going to move you back down towards this end, and we're going to fluff this up and, and see what does the moisture look like. Do we have a lot of worms down here? Um, we still have a lot of worms. Oh, look, one of my Florida avocados is growing roots. Good news. Um, if you have not been a member of my worm family for very long, I am well, plant obsessed. Uh, and in particular, I seem to have become obsessed with avocado trees, even though I live in zone uh, five, <laughs> which n there is no avocado on the planet that grows in zone five outside. Um, so I have a bunch of potted avocado trees. But the moisture is staying pretty even throughout here. Actually, the worms are still not leaving. They're not a worm ball, but they're just kind of wandering around over here for some reason. Um, but as I fluff it, I'm going to move it over a little bit, and if I see anything bigger, I'll get it out of the way. I have been leaving the avocados down here simply because it gets disturbed the least. Um, and if you, you wonder why am I trying to grow avocados, uh, I mean, that's, I don't know. But uh, the reason why I'm trying to grow these avocados in particular is because in order for them to pollinate, um, the information I'm getting came from a website called Sleepy Lizard. Check that out if you're interested in avocados. Um, but he's a farmer in Florida, and he was discussing how you can't just grow one kind of avocado because you need an AB pollinator. And so don't probably have A and B because all of my previous ones came from Haas avocados that you buy at the grocery store. All right, let's move down. And the likelihood that his Florida avocados are of a different kind is um, also a better, ch it's a better chance. So that's why I'm growing them and in particular leaving them down at that end. So as we go farther down this way, things are becoming less complete, but I am still seeing a good number of worms, which means there's still, still food. I'm not seeing it as food, but they must be um, thinking it's food, or otherwise they would leave and go to the opposite end where there are recent feedings. But I'm just going to grab anything that's big and throw it to the other end. Yeah, still a good number of worms over here. Kind of don't even know what that is. That's weird. You know, it's the uh, the worm nerd uh, favorite. You know, game name that old food. Uh, and sometimes it's easy, and sometimes you just have to realize they've gone too far. You can't figure it out. But the moisture is looking really good. Um, the furnace has not kicked on yet here. Uh, the, I don't know. It's the biomass from the house that keeps the house warmer. But I keep my thermostat at 63, and I have not had the furnace kick on yet. So that'll be good. Um, but as soon as it does kick on, then we're going to start having everything dry out. Uh, I might, might also have a um, invader in the basement again, so I'm starting to get a bit of a worm ball here. This is uh, hasn't been fed for probably a month, so I don't know what they're chewing on here, but it's still tasty for them. Uh, but as I was saying, I think I have an invader in the basement again. Don't know exactly what it is, but. From this point forward, I am just feeding pureed foods because um, most rodents like to uh, take their food and go back to their home to eat it because they're safe. And 
I'm going to make sure that everything's pureed and in with paper so they can't. There's no take a home a sack uh, for people. I don't know if uh, Steak and Shake is worldwide or not, but it's a uh, burger joint around where I live, and that's their motto. Get a take a home a sack. All right, so let me flip this camera around and we'll look at the leading edge. All right, so we're going to continue moving on. And for anybody living, listening through headphones, you can hear my laundry is going. <laughs> a lot of people say, oh, we can't hear it. I'm like, oh, I think I always hear it when I'm editing. And I'm like, oh, this is so strange. It's weird. But I have time to do all of my filming when I'm also doing laundry. So if it's annoying, forgive me. It's, it's what I do. It's a me thing. We're starting to get some worm bowl here. And let's see, oh, that's my plug to keep all the worms in. Sticks. So yeah, there's a lot of just diffuse worms in here on this part where we're at right now. mostly avocado, you know, anything that's visual that we can see what it is is avocado based. You can see that is a good number of worms. It looks like a good mix of the red wigglers and the the blue worms. Um, the, Euro the European night crawlers don't seem to be as numerous in these mixed systems. I think they just breed slower and and that's what happens you know, by default, you know, they they don't breed as fast, so everybody else out competes them. But, you know, whatever worm survives in here is going to eat my garbage, so that's fine. All right, let's move down a little bit more. So as we were continuing to flip, now the worms are getting to be a bigger size. Um, so I don't know if I, I mean, I'm finally getting hitting my stride with how much they need to eat to get bigger, or if it's just, you know, time. I don't know. It's hard to say. Most of my worm bins have worms that are smallish, regardless of species. Ooh, I think I just disturbed a worm ball. But yeah, look at that. This 55-gallon uh, bin has probably over 10 pounds of worms in it. And so even though I'm always surprised that they, you know, they do such a good job at eating all of my food, um, I should try to remember, you know, 10 pounds of worms is, you know, more likely to finish the food faster than if there was a smaller amount of worms in here. The paper's molding. Weird. But I'm going to just keep moving the non-finished stuff. And then this is where the most recent feeding was. You can see the paper is still very recognizable. It still smells like apples. I didn't watch the video, but tis the season for apple goo. Um, I always find that cute. They somehow found their way on the inside of the... Look at that. Just chock full of worms. But yeah, so... Most of my worms are right here. And with the bedding that's pretty new. And... Uh, they do finish up pretty good here. So... Do you guys puree your food? Uh, leave it in the comments below if, if you puree your food sometimes or um, no, never. I think when I first started I did because I wanted the worms to be able to eat it really fast. But uh, right now I'm doing it to you know prevent anything that might want to eat whole food from wanting to be here. 
All right, let's move down and then we will add uh, a new part to the wedge. Okay, so this is the leading end of the wedge here. And it's just basically paper and, and large things that I've picked. There are a few worms down here, but we're going to just make this the base for today's food and then uh, put more bedding on top. So let me grab that food. Okay, so here we go with the food today. It is more apple goo, as you can see, uh, but what you can't see, if you watch the African Nightcrawler video from the other day, um, there was watermelon. And so I pureed up the watermelon, the inside of the watermelon for over here. So this is a gallon bag of apple goo plus um, plus whatever one watermelon inside is. And I'm going to take these hard apples out. Okay. Or whole, not hard. Whole apples. Let me grab the bedding. Okay, this is a two gallon bucket. Um, and this is the bedding that I was making on the video of my best worm bedding. If you haven't seen that, I will link that in there. Um, and I'm going to mix this in with the bedding so that there is nothing that the whatever it is that's in the basement can run off with and go hide. They will have to take an entire ream of paper with them. Now, I don't think they eat worms. I mean, I, there's over 10 pounds in this system, so I probably wouldn't notice if a bunch were, you know, if some were missing, but, um, so I just want to make sure that I incorporate this really well. Um, I do know I have some pest control uh, in my past. I used to be in charge of pest control for a factory, and so I, I have quite a bit of uh, experience and, and training on pest control, and I know the behavior. That's a kiwi. I'm going to take that out too. I know their behavior is to grab food and run. So I'm going to make sure that there's really nothing for them to take off with. Um, I'm not sure. I've had pet mice too back in the day when I was younger. But uh, if you think this is a good idea to try and puree everything um, to keep them, keep any critter from wanting to run off with stuff, let me know in the comments below. All right. So here we have the feeding of the blue. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing, what I'm doing, ring that bell icon. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me and my worms, and everybody, have a good day.